Okay, so now uh, I'm in a bedroom that's up above the garage. And before we get done, I'm going to show you where these cables come out in the garage. But right now I'm up above the garage. And this is actually, in case people are interested in what I do with my spare time, come on around here. These are my books that I have been through at least once. I have more at the office. I enjoy learning about IT. I spend all my, a lot of my free time learning about IT. For those who are Cisco fanatics like I am, you will see I got some routers and switches here and I got some laying on the floor in the back and some phones when I practice VoIP uh, programming and things like that and I got some stuff on the side. But this is what I uh, do if you're in the IT profession, be a professional. Um, and that means you know your subject matter and, and study. And I'm constantly studying and you can see there's books here. This is a great place to study. I have my little desk. Put this up. I can put my laptop here. I can put my book here. I can practice programming routers and switches. And, and if it's VoIP, I can practice VoIP. I can practice uh, hacking techniques and things like that because I have a computer back here that I uh, uh, set up that you know I could practice hacking into. Uh, at any rate that's not what we're here for so let's look a little bit into the closet. Besides the closet having all the parts that I need and use for storage and some other miscellaneous books or anything else what I have done here and I'll let you get in here and take a look I ran cable up from the garage and we're going to see this later and this cable goes from there and it goes in here into my surface jack. Now these jacks I use in my lab here that I am working on learning different things. I need sometimes I need internet access to download stuff or, or to uh, practice VPN, uh, not VPN, uh, yeah VPN, practice VPN, things like that. I need internet access. so. Uh, I have to string a cable across here every once in a while. But if you also notice, go back in there, I have cable that's going up to the attic. Now, standing out here in the room, you don't see any of that. This is a good place to put cable right behind here that people don't see it. You may see it when you walk in the room, but if you're in a closet, how many people walk in the closet and turn around and look at the door jam? So this is a good place to put this. So you put this right along here, no one sees it, it's hidden. You don't have to do drywall damage. And if you notice, it goes up into the wall, a little bit of a kick out, because at that, that ceiling there, there's a two by four. I don't want to really drill through that two by four. So I kick it out a little bit there, okay? And it comes all the way up from the garage. Now let me trace it, okay? So it's up in the attic now. So I'm going to go all the way across the top of the attic. Here's the attic access. You climb up there and you, you can grab the cable. And some parts you're going to need is you're going to need what's called a fishing rod. And it's obviously it's not for fishing, but it's for what they call fishing cables. And we sell those. And you really need those. They're, they're a fiberglass rod that's flexible. I pushed that down to the garage once I drilled a hole through and I knew I didn't have any water pipes going in that area um, or electrical in that area so I drilled all the way through to the uh, to the top of the garage and then I pushed a uh, fishing rod uh, down, attached the wires and pulled them up, separated four of them for my room here, for my lab, and then the other four I'm sending this way. So I'm up in the attic. We're going all the way across here, all the way across. And, hey, every guy needs a big TV, right? You gotta sit here and relax at night. You know, I got a little computer. I got my uh, DVD uh, player and I got my TV with the surround sound. But if you look in the back, what we have here, because you notice there's no wires down here. What, in the, what you see in the back is you see one of these um, devices where all the cables uh, go into. And those devices we also sell 
and we also have a video of these uh, how to put these devices in and uh, and uh, how to cable them and it's it's really involved that's a whole nother uh, computer uh, I mean a whole nother installation technique um, and we have a video that just talks about how to put those boxes in um, we put them into a resident uh, about a year and a half ago um, it's rare that we do residential cabling or that I do residential cabling what's interesting is that's where I started out many years ago uh, uh, I worked for a company that basically did residential cabling uh, it's kind of humorous because one time uh, we were hired out to cable this huge house that was right on the beach uh, up in Orange County and they built the whole house and then they realized the general contractor that he never cabled for telephone and back then that's what you needed telephone I don't think we really cabled for computers at that point so we had to go into this big beautiful multi-million dollar home uh, um, uh, probably some Hollywood stars home or some extremely rich guy or woman's house um, when we had to cable it and we spent a week putting in three jacks without doing any damage to the wall. The walls were already painted, everything was already done. The owner was just about at the point to accept the house from the, from the contractor and we had to go in and cable it afterwards. Man, that was difficult because they wanted places like they wanted uh, TVs on the ceiling so you could sit there in bed and just look up at the TV and things like that and it really became difficult. Um, again, homes are extremely difficult uh, to cable if you don't have certain techniques and and ways of doing it so you don't damage the drywall. But again, if you look at the wall here behind the TV where I have that thing, I also have a small one down here. Let's see if I can move this. don't think I can without everything. Oh, the power dropping. I have a small one. So the wires down here are going up to the wires up there. And what I did is I put two internet connections there and two internet connections down here this takes an internet connection the TV takes an internet connection and I have one going to this computer this small computer here that takes an internet connection also so I use three internet connections here I got one extra in case there's a problem or in case I need to add something additional up here nice place to put a, a Wi-Fi uh, transmitter because it's at the other end of the house if that other one in the garage didn't quite uh, do a good job or I wanted to reach out into uh, the external there, this would be a place to put it. This would be uh, how to do it. So let's go down in the garage. I'm going to show you what the cable looks like down in the garage and how it comes up. And I'm not quite done in the garage. And I'll show you what you need to do. Okay, remember I, when I was in the closet upstairs in my, that bedroom I used to study, um, I was telling you that the cable went down into the garage. Well, this is where it comes out. You see it right there? That's where it comes out. Now, that was a little tricky. I had to do a little bit of planning. So what I did was I had to measure where I wanted to go down in the closet. So I had to draw a little plan and measure the feet all the way to the staircase. And then I measured from that location on the second floor, because that's the only location I can get exact coordinates from. Uh, I had to take it down to the floor there, and I measured from, the f from there all the way into here to figure out that that's where it would come. Now, if you notice, if you look at this, look up here, you can tell that there is a support beam that goes across there. So I did not want to interfere with that support beam or this support beam. And as it turned out when I measured it, that that's exactly uh, the uh, closet where it would come down. Now, uh, look at this again. There is one issue here that you need to be aware of that I will be addressing. And that is um, that that needs to be fire um, uh, retardant needs to be put there. It's some sort of, sometimes it comes in a, uh, in a, uh, a caulking uh, tube, you guys are caulking, but that needs to be sealed um, with a fire um, block. It's called a fire block. Now what actually I'm going to do is I have a, um, a, a small metal um, electrical box 
that's been cut in half. And what I'm going to do is, when I'm all done, I'm going to put that me medical bo or metal box up there. I'm going to reattach it, and I'm going to caulk that full of uh, fire um, a block. Now, there's two reasons why you want to do that. First of all, if there's a fire in the garage, um, and garages are made in such a way that they're pretty much resistant to fire, to a certain point anyway, for the fire going throughout the rest of the house. So they're sealed. They have certain types of thickness of walls. The door is a special door. This is a fire room. This is protect you while you're sleeping and your car is on fire before you, you know, get a chance to get out of the house. So I can't have a hole there because what will happen is you've got a fire. The draft is going to go right up to the second floor and it's going gonna, it's gonna to get that second floor uh, room on fire. Uh, plus, at the same time, if somebody decides to keep a car running in here with all the doors, the fumes are going to go up into that bedroom. Um, so you want to protect the second floor, you want to protect the rest of the house, and you also want to follow code. So code requires that I use a fire block there. And there's different ways you could do it. It comes in putty sometimes. You can do that. Um, I'm going to use a metal box, and then I'm going to pack that metal box full of fire retardant. I'm going to shoot fire not retardant, I'm sorry, a uh, fire block. I'm going to put the, the fire block up into the wall so it's going to be very much fire resistant and it's also going to keep the fumes out of that room and that's, that's going to be done shortly. Um, but, you, you know, in this case, this is, this is a, um, uh, what you would call a, uh, a violation of a building code not to fire block that and that will be taken care of. So just a quick overview, we talked about outside, you can see it from here, uh, the boxes. And that's, that's the responsibility of the phone company and Cox, the cable company, everything else. They run the cable underneath here, and it goes to the minimum point of entry that we've already discussed, right? There's the minimum point of entry. Up to that point, phone company... Cox, all the utilities, that's their responsibility. After that, it becomes the owner's responsibility uh, for the home. It comes in here. It comes up over to my router, which is also a Wi-Fi uh, router. Um, and I, I take one port off of there, and I bring it all the way back, and it's going to go to my switch. And then my switch acts like a, a center of a, a hub, even though I hate to use that word hub because it's not a hub, um, but it acts like a hub. It's, you know, where all the cables come into. I uh, firmly attach all my cables to the back of the patch panel. Uh, I'm never going to have more than 12 ports here uh, in this house. Um, I use uh, the patch cords go into the switch and then everything is connected, yet separated. That's what a switch is good about. And um, everything in the house works great, and I get the uh, bandwidth that I need uh, anywhere in the house, any time. I can watch TV, two TVs, both on the Internet. I can watch uh, Netflix and Hulu and all the other stuff that's out there. Um, and uh, it works really well. Uh, again, homes are really hard to cable, and I've given you some techniques techniques about using um, the outside of your house as entry along the way. I can go all the way around the house on the outside. Um, if I wanted to get that room on the other side of this wall, I could go across the top of the ceiling and go right through. If I do that in a garage, I'm going to need that fire block. I can go right through. I can put a jack there. So pretty much anywhere in the house I can put a jack if I use certain techniques and certain ways of doing things. And these are some of the techniques. Um, upstairs, I showed you how you can uh, run a cable on the inside of a closet where no one sees it. And I also uh, showed you how to go across the, the attic and then bring it down into one of those boxes. Again, we do have other cables on our other videos on those, how to put a box up on the wall behind your TV. And we do sell those boxes. And we also have videos on how to uh, cut a hole in a drywall. There's certain ways to do it that really makes it nice and clean, really makes it look nice. We have videos on that. You know, what type of jack to use, how to punch down that jack. There's all those videos uh, in other parts of our uh, YouTube account. 
and you can view those. In some cases, they also are long videos, especially the one on how to hang a TV on a wall and get the cables looking nice and neat. Uh, thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned some things about your home, about what cable to use, how to uh, install different jacks in different areas and everything else. Most homes can be uh, installed that way. Um, and uh, remember the two different types of cable, direct burial and uh, for the outside, uh, UV uh, protected cable if you're going to run the cable up alongside the house. Inside you can use um, what they used to call IW, uh, you know, Cat 5E, Cat 6, it's all inside wire. That's why they call it IW. Um, and uh, please check out our website, like us and follow us and anything else you want to do. Really appreciate that if you do it. Uh, and please, if you appreciate this uh, information I've given you, please buy from our website. Uh, really, that helps us make these type of videos. Again, my name is Jim Gibson. I'm with CableSupply.com. I'm also with Nova Voice and Data Systems. And I hope you have a great day. Hi, this is Jim with CableSupply.com. Hi, this is Jim from CableSupply.com. Hi, this is Jim with CableSupply.com. And today I'm going to show you how to cut a hole in the drywall. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to this YouTube installment of CableSupply.com.